Edo State Police Command on Saturday night announced that an unspecified number of travelers waiting to board a train from Iguembe in Edo State to Wari in Delta State were kidnapped by suspected headsmen. The command in a statement issued by its spokesperson, Chidi Mwabuzo, said that the incident occurred about 4 p.m. on Saturday. According to the statement, the suspected headsmen who were armed with AK-47 rifles invaded the trains and the station and shot sporadically into the air before marching off with an unspecified number of intending travelers into the nearby bush. The statement added that in the process of the abduction, some of the passengers sustained bullet wounds, just as the police disclosed that the bush combing exercise and rescue operations had begun to rescue those that were kidnapped. For greater insight, we're now being joined by Dr. Roy uh, Ochivi Debe, a military veteran and chief executive officer of August Eye Security Limited. Welcome to the program, and thank you very much uh, for joining us, uh, Chief Oki, Oki Dibye. Well, I hope that pronunciation is correct. If, I'm, if the pronunciation, <laughs> is, if it is wrong, I apologize. But I guess Oki Dibye, okay? Ohi Dibye. Ohi Dibye. Ohi Dibye, okay. Dibye. Thank, thank you very much. Excellent. Thank, thank Excellent. you for joining us. Thank you. Well, when we had that incident in March, along the Abuja Kaduna uh, rail line of the train being attacked, persons being kidnapped, Nigerians were alarmed. Okay, months later, we went through all of that, and then that particular route was reopened. And the Nigerian Railway Corporation told us that, look, everything had been taken care of, steps had been taken, we will not have a repeat with regard to uh, the rail network in the, in the country. There were persons who were skeptical at that time. So we have this. How bad is the situation? It's bad enough, but what do you say about this? Hello, doctor. Well, um, th thank you very much. Um, you see, the, the situation we are, we are getting around these, our critical assets, our critical um, um, <coughs> infrastructure, is very disheartening. If you, if you look at um, other, other countries where we are going to borrow this um, transport system from, the people that are also invited to install these systems for us, they don't have some peculiar security, insecurity challenges that we have. You know, so we, we don't institute um, deterrent measures in everywhere that we borrow technology or infrastructure. Now, if you look at the Kaduna train attack the other time, the minister came out to say that um, we, we have not established the agreed security structure before we kick-started the transportation system. You know, so that is very disheartening because we don't value human life. If you look at the Edo state and the, the running through to Delta and Edo, you should, you're supposed to expect that um, there, there's always an heightened security situation in Edo state, considering the influx of all these elements of suspicious character in our forest areas. And we don't have policing in all of those areas. Don't forget that um, the railway system is a government critical infrastructure. And then um, the Civil Defense Corps was one of the agencies that was also assigned responsibility for government critical infrastructure. Then every critical infrastructure is supposed to have deterrence measures, perimeter control measures, access control measures, then technological input. For the last um, jailbreak in Abuja, till date, we don't even see any video footage recorded by the CCTV system. But if we go to our banks, many of our banks that have been robbed, the CCTV footages has helped the police and the public to identify and arrest these uh, miscreants. So for, for our system infrastructure, we are still backward in our input for security measures and deterrent systems. Well, the police, they claim, the Adoste Police Command, that they are engaged in bushcombing and they are trying to uh, rescue 
the abducted uh, persons. What will be your advice to not just the police, but also the Nigerian Railway Corporation that promised us that uh, measures have been taken, well, um, security okay. has been guaranteed across the country, and yet we have this ugly incident? Well, I'm very grateful for this opportunity, but you, you will agree with me that um, all the advisory that we have been channeling to this um, government system that we have seen a magnitude of loss of life, none have been taken. If, if, you, if you want to ask me, I would say that um, all the communities where you have in, um, constructed a government facility that has this um, risk of attack, like a um, terrorist risk of attack, Every terrorist group wants to attack where there's a lot of people and we're going to make a lot of name. And you know, this transport system or the rail system has been an escape for Nigerians from the daring arm robbers and the um, hoodlums on the roads. So we have seen that it should be protected. So why not in the first instance institute a, a, a feedback system in every community where you have a, 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 a railway station. Why don't you have a feedback community that you can get information where they identify suspicious persons? Why don't you create a kind of perimeter control system? So when unauthorized people want to gain authorized access, you immediately trigger a, an armed response team. Though you will have a response team on ground, but once they see that is greater, they should also trigger an armed response team. Even from the air, what happened to our Air Force system, our Tucano system? Those Tucano can fly in a second and perimeter control will trigger influx and we can monitor these persons even as they withdraw away. What happened to our drone system? If the criminals have struck, Okay, and we don't have opportunity. The railway station itself, the technicians that are there, can they not release a drone into the air to follow them and begin to give real-time situation of how they are moving these persons away? You know, so all of these things we have not put into place. And the undercover system of the railway stations, the, the security um, system in the railway stations, they have not been correlated with the communities where they exist. Even the trans routes of all the rail lines, you're supposed to have feedback system in every community. Okay. What we know, what was reported, is that this uh, kidnapper, suspected herdsman, attacked this train station. Are we saying, are we telling the entire world that our train stations have no security arrangements? Well, <laughs> obviously, you know, it, it was, it was it's disheartening to see that um, I'm not even looking firstly at the railway station bridge. I'm looking at Nigeria not putting its eyes on its greatest assets. One of our greatest assets in Nigeria is our economy. Because the more depreciation we get in our economy, the more frustrated the citizens become, the more insecurity we have. You know, and we have borrowed a lot of money to put into this rail system. And it gets derailed, attacked, and abused at every point in time. Another greatest asset Nigeria is not putting its eyes upon are the people, the masses, not the elite. The government is for the people and by the people. And it's supposed to provide security, stability, and comfort. See that we don't put our eyes on it. Now, the train station has been shut down. Kaduna's train station was shut down for how long? And we are repaying these debts and the dollar is not coming down, and the, prof the interest on this is rising. So the people are suffering. They will go and bail themselves from the bandits. Don't forget, a lot of families were paying ransom to release their families from the bandits in Kaduna. Now the same Nigerians will now be bailing themselves from these kidnappers, and the same Nigerians will be paying tax that is being abused for economic infrastructure like rail lines that is supposed to protect them not to follow the road, which the same government cannot protect, and the same government cannot repair the roads, so I'm going to use the train. So it's just a circle of abuse of our um, territorial integrity by the current system. Okay, well... <clears throat> 
<clears throat> the train station in Ugwebe has been shut down indefinitely, we're told. The police claim that they are doing bush combing. Yes, they have to be seen to be doing something. What else should the police do? What else should the state do to rescue these persons? Whose well, only crime is that they, um, they, they, they went they, to a train station <laughs> to travel from Igwembe to worry? It's, it's sad, sir, when you hear people say we are doing bush combing and they put it in a report. If you are doing bush combing, should it be in your report? Your bush combing, do you need to do bush combing when you are supposed to have um, intelligence gathering system even in the unpoliced areas? Don't you know any hunter, any farmer, any palm one tapper, any other system that works within the bush areas where these criminals are supposed to move through with these people, don't you have phone numbers to call to say, have you seen something? Please say something. So if you go and be doing bush combing and you are telling us already that you have started bush combing, what technological input have you put in your bush combing? How many drones do you have in the air to begin to give you feedback? Do we have any area survey from helicopters, from planes, or the life of Nigerians does not befit a situation where the Air Force should hit the skies immediately and rescue them before they begin to face all of the abuse. Have you thought how many of them have medical conditions? Have you thought how many of them might be pregnant in that situation? Have you thought how many of them are children among those that have been kidnapped? The elderly that have been kidnapped? So nobody thinks about this thing and these are emotional components that should trigger the immediate action of a government. So when the government is sitting down relaxed in his own comfort zone and the people that are paying taxes to fund and feed this government are being left at the discretion of miscreants and bandits so what are you asking us to say the police are combing the bush and they are saying they are combing the bush so who do you think is not looking at the media? These bandits, they are technologically wise. They have electronic surveillance. They have all it takes to do counter surveillance to know who it's after them. It's so pathetic. Well, part of the problem that we face in this country is that we have uh, small arms and ammunition in the hands of, as to use your expression, unauthorized persons. How do we address that challenge? Small arms proliferation, which is at the very heart of the problem. We were told that in Uguembe, this uh, suspected husband, as they've been described by the media, came with uh, AK-47. We live in a country where anybody can just carry AK-47 and misbehave, even when there, is, there are laws in place uh, that makes uh, you know, uh, uh, illegal possession of uh, arms and ammunition uh, an offense. Well, let, let's start from the, the discovery that was made on the, the seaports, where we had a lot of containers that the, it was detected to be carrying arms into the country. Those cases have gone under the carpet. Did you hear of anyone that was arrested? Did you hear of anyone that was convicted for um, proliferation of arms? All of those arrests that have been made, no traction towards recovery of sources. Now, let's look at those that have been arrested and in possession of AK-47. What kind of interview and interrogation was done to detect their source of supply? What measures was also put in place to arrest the suppliers? Then all the suppliers that we have also seen on media, on viral videos that have been arrested for supplying weapons, AK-47. Where are the closures on those cases? You know, are there external foreign collaborators who has taken the, the duty to investigate the external foreign co collaborators and bring them to book to serve as a deterrent? Consequence is a deterrent in every society. Now let's look at the personnel of our agencies, soldiers, police officers. They have been arrested also 
found to be breaching discipline and selling weapons to bandits and terrorists and criminals. So those cases have also not had closure. So I would also be asking our judiciary some questions. Our apex head and leadership in judiciary came back to the country one time from a trip and said he has all the names of persons and institutions and companies that sponsor terrorism till date that is about two or three years ago and he holds the 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 iron wielding authority of our judiciary what has he done what has the judiciary done to to uh, address this information that he has and bring them to the public glare and show how they have been given the appropriate consequences so we are not ready sir and it's unfortunate well dr roy I understand that the Nigerian Railway Corporation has assured Nigerians in their do state that yes, they may have shut down the uh, Igwebeng uh, warrior train uh, route, but that people can still travel from Itakwe uh, to worry. And the minister early today, uh, you know, visited to see things for himself. And the minister of transportation says, "Oh, additional security measures." be put in place. How do you assess that in terms of official reaction to this potentially tragic situation? In, in, um, in, in, every, in every sane society, in every sane society, I say it again, such ministers are supposed to be answering questions right now. They're supposed to be on suspension. This is the same minister of transportation that stood in public glare and the ruins of the attack on the Kaduna train were behind him with all the other armed forces um, reps were around him. And he said the security measure um, um, pro, um, created and um, approved for the railway system has not gone into implementation. But the train is running, not carrying the children of government, but the children of, of the masses. Now, this same system again is saying that we will give additional security where was your risk assessment who conducted risk assessment which agency conducted risk assessment which agency gave security advisory to 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 mitigate the threat that the risk assessment discovered now which approval was given or not given then who is the minister asking to bring up improved security? Your improved security measure you are asking about, what help does that have now for the innocent Nigerians now that are facing a threat to life situation? For the innocent families right now who have been be be bedeviled with poor economic system for the past years by Nigerian government. Now they need to begin to sell their properties, sell their land, destroy their businesses, their life income, to pay ransom to rescue their loved ones. And now you come on air and you say you are giving additional security. These people should be arrested and should start asking questions. What is the accountability measure? What were the deterrence measure? What was the risk assessment? Did you contract it out for security measures identified to curb all of these vulnerabilities to be instituted? Was it instituted? If it was not, who is responsible? Well, on that note, uh, Dr. Roy uh, Ohidibye, I would like to thank you very much for joining us on this day live, the Sunday talk show. Thank well, you very the much. The police have told us that uh, they will inform us about uh, further developments. I guess what we should hear about further developments should be the success of the rescue operation, and that another set of Nigerians will not be exposed to unnecessary hardship. Thank you very much, Doctor, for joining, joining us.